Step into the cosmic intrigue surrounding Europa, Jupiter's enigmatic moon that defies the odds by keeping warm despite its distance from the Sun. This celestial oddity isn't just basking in its own glow, it's actually receiving energy from Jupiter and its orbiting moons. Imagine that, a moon in the icy depths of space, thriving under the watchful gaze of its colossal planet and its entourage. Astronomers have been captivated by Europa for centuries, ever since Galileo Galilei first trained his handmade telescope on Jupiter and its moons in 1610. Fast forward through centuries of speculation and tantalizing hints of an ocean beneath Europa's icy veneer, and we arrive at a pivotal moment, the James Webb Space Telescope, peering at Europa for an astounding 10 hours. What did it reveal during this unprecedented observation? Could this be our long-awaited clue to life beyond Earth? The anticipation is palpable as we await the revelations from this cosmic detective work. Europa, one of over 90 moons in Jupiter's retinue, is the sixth closest to our planet. Its surface, primarily water ice with hints of silicate rock, bears testimony to a geologically youthful age, an astonishing revelation in itself. But what lies beneath is what truly stirs the imagination, an ocean of salt water, possibly twice the volume of Earth's oceans combined. Could this subterranean realm harbor the building blocks of life as we know it? Scientists believe so, pointing to the potential presence of essential chemicals necessary for life's emergence. The journey of discovery didn't begin with Webb's recent gaze. It stretches back to the 1970s when the Voyager probes provided our first high-definition glimpses of Europa's intricate surface. These early images hinted at a dynamic world, devoid of the typical scars of celestial impacts. Instead, Europa's surface is adorned with dark reddish cracks, possibly the result of icy volcanism or geological processes that remain a mystery. Further expeditions like the Galileo mission in the 1990s deepened our understanding, revealing magnetic anomalies that hinted at a subsurface ocean interacting with Jupiter's magnetic field. Recent observations have even suggested the presence of water plumes erupting from Europa's icy shell, reaching heights that defy the Moon's diminutive size. Could these plumes be the key to finally unlocking Europa's secrets? Imagine a future mission sailing through these ethereal fountains to sample the very essence of Europa's ocean from space, a scenario reminiscent of NASA's Cassini probe's daring dives into Enceladus's geysers at Saturn. The search for life beyond our pale blue dot has never been more tantalizing. Europa, with its icy exterior masking untold wonders beneath, stands as a beacon of possibility in our cosmic neighborhood. As we ponder the implications of Webb's latest revelations, one thing is clear. Europa's saga continues to unfold, promising answers that could forever change our understanding of life in the universe. In order to keep exploring, the James Webb Space Telescope used two main tools to look at Europa, NICMOS and NIRCOM. The Near Infrared Camera, NICMOS, which is James Webb's main camera, is NASA's replacement for Hubble and Spitzer. Its main job is to take very clear pictures in the near-infrared range of light. NICMOS has two parts. One is for wide-field imaging, and the other is for coronagraphy, a way to block out the bright light that stars and planets give off and show things that are fainter in the background. NICMOS collects light from the first stars in galaxies, as well as stars in nearby galaxies, young stars in the Milky Way, and objects in the Kuiper Belt. Its wavelength range is from 0.6 to 5 microns. Astronomers can use NICMOS coronagraphs to take pictures of things that are very dim and close to a central light source, like star systems. Coronagraphs on NICMOS work by blocking the light of a brighter object, so you can focus on a close object that is less bright. This is similar to how raising your hand over your eyes in the sun lets you focus on what's in front of you. Astronomers plan to use coronagraphs to find out about the properties of planets that circle stars close by. The near-infrared spectrograph, near spec, on the other hand, tests bands between 0.6 and 5 microns. A spectrograph, which is also called a spectrometer, is a machine that turns light from an item into a spectrum. 
The spectrum of an item can tell you about its temperature, mass, and chemical makeup, among other things. The object's atoms and molecules leave marks on its spectrum that are unique to each chemical element and can tell you a lot about its physical state. Spectroscopy and spectrometry are two of the best ways to study the world because they can be used to figure out what these lines mean. Webb looks at a lot of very dim things, like the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. It takes hundreds of hours for Webb's huge screen to gather enough light to make a spectrum. During its five-year mission, the Nair spec will look at 100 objects at the same time, which will allow it to look at thousands of galaxies. The Nair spec is the first space-based spectrograph that can see more than one object at once. Concerning how close Europa's ocean is to its surface, Dr. Gono Villanua stated, I believe that question has been a major motivator for Europa exploration. This suggests that we may be able to learn some basic things about the ocean's composition even before we drill through the ice to get the full picture. Dr. Gono Villanua is a planetary scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. He studies life in space and looks for it on Mars, Venus, ocean worlds like Europa and Enceladus, as well as on primitive bodies like comets and faraway exoplanets. He is the assistant director for strategic science in the Solar System Exploration Division. Aside from that, Villanua is the lead scientist for the Comet Interceptor mission, a co-investigator for the ExoMars TGO mission, and the James Webb Space Telescope leader for studies on Mars and ocean worlds. The experts say that Webb did not find any plumes while it was studying Europa, but that does not mean that there aren't any. Heidi Hamel said, There is always the possibility that these plumes are variable and only visible at certain times. All we can say with 100% certainty is that when we made these observations with Webb, we did not detect a plume at Europa. Hamel is an interdisciplinary scientist who works on the James Webb Telescope Project. She focuses on planetary systems and how life began. She has used the Gemini, Hubble, Keck, Spitzer, and other telescopes to study the outer planets of our solar system, as well as their rings and moons. As a planetary scientist, Hamill knows a lot about how to use Hubble to look at the solar system. She was in charge of the Hubble team that looked into what happened when comet shoemaker Levy 9 crashed into Jupiter in July 1994, focusing on how Jupiter's atmosphere changed. Here is a deeper look at what the James Webb Space Telescope found on the surface of Europa. On Europa's frozen surface, scientists found both crystalline and amorphous carbon dioxide. Amorphous means that the form of the molecules is not organized, unlike crystals, which have solid patterns. Carbon dioxide is one of the most important things in the world. It is a gas made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. It is thought to be very important to life because it does things like breathing, metabolism, and photosynthesis. Plus, it's a greenhouse gas that traps heat and changes the Earth's temperature. They were first interested in where the carbon dioxide came from. Did it come from outside of Europa or from other places? Since it came from micrometeorites or other things inside of the moon, it was pretty much the same everywhere. In this case, though, it was only in one place. Geologists think that this area is a new chaotic terrain. This is very interesting because it means that something is happening below it. Today's question is how carbon dioxide got to the surface of Europa and why it's only there in one place. Most likely, the carbon came from Europa's underground ocean, which is thought to be a possible place. This all-encompassing plan for research sets the stage for a full study of the whole system of Jupiter. It gives us a new way to look at the wonders of these cold moons and may change the way we think about how life could exist beyond Earth. Thanks for seeing another video. Click the movie on your screen to see more videos like this one that will blow your mind.